the White House announced it was suspending all oil and gas leases on federal land, would begin transforming the government's vast fleet of cars and trucks into electric vehicles and propose legislation to eliminate fossil fuel subsidies. Biden will host a leaders' climate summit on Earth Day, April 22, in a bid to create momentum before the Glasgow summit in November. We need to be bold, U.S. President Joe Biden. Credit, AP, we've waited too long to deal with this climate crisis, Biden said at a White House signing ceremony. This is not a time for small measures. We need to be bold. Biden has also created a new Office of Domestic Climate Policy to coordinate climate policy across key government agencies. In his first appearance at the White House briefing room, Kerry said, the stakes on climate change just simply couldn't be any higher than they are right now. This is an issue where failure, literally, is not an option. Speaking earlier at the World Economic Forum, Kerry said he read an article over Christmas, that ought to stop every single one of us in our tracks. Headlined, Watching Earth Burn, the story by New York Times writer Michael Benson pieced together satellite images of the Australian bushfire emergency. You could see huge plumes of smoke when you saw these pictures of Australia's fires with, and I quote Michael, flame vortexes spiraling 200 feet into the air, passing New Zealand and stretching thousands of miles into the Cobalt Pacific, Kerry said. He continued to quote details in Benson's article, including the raising of an estimated 46 million acres, loss of dozens of lives, destruction of nearly 6,000 buildings and potential extinction of some species. Benson summed it up, Kerry said. With shocking iconographic precision, that unfurling banner of smoke said, the war has started. We're losing. Kerry did not directly criticize Australia's climate change policies but earlier this week said he would push the world's largest emitters to sign up to deeper cuts. Australia has a goal of cutting emissions by 26-28% by 2030. It has not signed up to achieving net zero emissions by 2050 but Morrison's language has shifted recently and many Liberal MPs believe he will take the pledge to the Glasgow summit. So we are here now, at this moment, not just because we understand the urgency or the moral imperative, we're here because we know we can't afford to lose any longer and action is the one moral, economic and scientific imperative worth contemplating," Kerry said. He emphasized the need to limit temperature rises to 1.5 degrees but warned the world was on track to hit 4.1 or 4.5 degrees of warming. The Glasgow meeting is the, the last best chance, to arrest the trajectory, Kerry said. But even if we did everything that was promised in Paris, folks, temperatures are going to rise to 3.7 degrees. And that's just because the conglomeration of all the things people were willing to do didn't add up to what we need to do.